Yo, dudes, what's up? I recorded this video yesterday for an hour and a half and the mic was muted. So, so I'm doing it again today. So today I'm covering the final major input that you can use to play Final Fantasy 14. And that is the controller. And again, the convenience with Final Fantasy 14 is that you can play with multiple different types of inputs. You can play with a keypad, you can play with a controller, or you can play with a keyboard and mouse. At the end of the day, it's really whatever works for you. Now, what I love about controller is all my lifetime, I always thought I would never really be able to use a controller to play something like an MMORPG, especially with tab targeting. Square Enix somehow found a fantastic way to put it all together in a neat little package in Final Fantasy XIV, which makes controller play extremely viable. Some of the best players in the world use a controller. A lot of those players in, say, EU or Japan, for example, when they play on PS4. And I mentioned it before, the place where I started playing Final Fantasy XIV was here, on the PS3. So I actually started playing on controller. I remember I main Scholar all the way through around Reborn in 2.0. And then as soon as Heaven's Ward hit and I upgraded to PS4, I switched to Dark Knight because I love, I love Dark Knight. I love Final Fantasy IV. It's my favorite Final Fantasy. It's good stuff. Hell yeah. But playing on controller wasn't actually that bad. Mind you, I didn't really enjoy the game on PS3. And then I revisited it on PS4 and I fell in love with the game and here we are still playing it many many years ago Too many hours played in game So there's a giant misconception that controller isn't as good as keyboard and mouse where there is arguably just as good, if not better, at certain times. So today I'm gonna to be trying to set you guys up to successfully use controller on PC or on PS4. This guide video will be particularly done on PS4. I'm gonna be capturing my gameplay from my PS4 Pro because I know there's gonna be more players that are interested in how to set up their controller properly on PS4 than there is on PC. And we all know, inevitably, the game's gonna be coming out, hopefully for Xbox Series X, PS5 is confirmed, and who knows, possibly other consoles coming down the way, which makes me want to show you guys how to do everything on a console instead of just doing it on PC. However, this method all works the same for PC as well. If you are a controller player, you can do all this stuff that I'm about to show you on PC. All you have to do is flick a switch and basically you're set to go for controller play. Now, before I go into things a little bit much, if you are on PC, you thankfully have the option of playing with other controllers. And I just want to demonstrate that there is a difference with certain controllers. So with PS4 controller and Xbox controller, you have sort of these, these triggers, which like require a little bit more of a button press because they're more set up to be, you know, triggers rather than buttons, right? That's just how PS4 and Xbox function because usually these are made for like first-person shooters, third-person shooters, and so on and so forth. If you guys can find a controller that has button presses that don't require as much tension, like the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, for example, I highly recommend it for controller play on console or on PC as well. And the reason for this is because the buttons, again, like I mentioned, they're not as springy when it comes to pressing those buttons. Now we use left trigger and right trigger a lot on controller and just having a little less tension in a controller is extremely helpful. And the Nintendo Switch Pro controller just happens to be a relatively good candidate when it comes to this. The triggers and the buttons are quite plushy, like the bumpers and the triggers. So I really do like that. And for Final Fantasy 14, it would probably feel really good. However, of course, if you don't have controller options and you're bound to whatever controller you have on your console, instead of you know being able to be on PC and pick other controllers, that's okay too. This controller is equally as good as any other. The difference being is the triggers just require a little bit more press to them than usual, is all I'm trying to say. Having a controller that has plushier buttons helps with these kinds of things in Final Fantasy 14. Although it's not game breaking, it's not a huge difference. Pick whatever controller is gonna work for you. So let's get started. Now the benefit here with console and PS4 in general is that you don't really have to do too much for fixing your keybinds or anything. You don't have to like change around your HUD too much unless you so choose to. It's kind of just what it is, which is super great. And as I always remind you guys, Pick a nice comfortable spot to set up your UI on because you're gonna be here for about an hour or two and you're gonna find tweak things and whatnot and you just wanna sit and sort of enjoy the scenery while you're setting things up. So if you guys recall in the last two videos, I was like, all right, we wanna set our HUD up so it looks a certain way and we wanna hide some buttons and we wanna like get it set up so that it makes sense. Well, with controller on cross hotbar, it kinda already has all that, which is kinda cool. So I made my UI as default as default could be in Final Fantasy XIV to sort of set you guys up. This is me playing on a PS4 Pro so the performance will be a little bit different comparatively to me on PC. 
which is okay for now. And we're going to do a little bit of housekeeping to sort of set things up comfortably. So while we don't have to do as much setup as like, say, a keyboard and mouse or a keypad, we still have to do a couple things to make the game look a little prettier, especially when it comes to console. So before we do that, I just want to say if you are playing on PC and you want to start playing with the controller and you want this menu set of like this, rather than what it looks like on uh, PC to begin with, you can go into character configuration, go to the top switch here, and you can change it to controller mode or of course mouse mode. So like, let's say I was playing with a mouse and keyboard on PS4, I could go back and forth between mouse mode and controller mode, or I could just set it up like so. But if you're looking to set up for controller play on PC, this is how you do it. You just do it right from the character configuration menu, flip the switch to controller mode, and you're good to go. And your cross hotbar should swap out for your regular hotbars. Now, the first thing you've obviously noticed, because you can't not see it, is the UI by default is huge. Like on PS4, the UI is ginormous. So we're gonna quickly change that so it's not so, you know, invasive and big, and it takes up like 60% of the screen. It reminds me of that, like that old meme with like the wow image and the guy's got like all these add-ons and everything and the UI just takes up like, <laughs> you can just like just see wow a little bit behind it. This is what this reminds me of, obviously to a lesser extent, but still it's <laughs> it's so funny to me. So we do that by hitting the start or options button. We're gonna go over to system. I'm gonna click system configuration and I'm gonna go down to display settings. So I'm gonna go here. I'm gonna go down and size that down to say 80% and hit apply all. See, that already looks way less obnoxious to me. I really do like that. I also say like, if you have a bigger or smaller screen, however your preference is sort of fit for your UI, you can choose to have it at 90%, 100%, so on and so forth, whatever you'd like. But that's the easiest way to just downsize everything really quick. And if there's any specific elements that you need to adjust in your HUD that still seem a little too large, you can go over to your HUD layout Go down to the little bar, select whatever element you need to downsize. So like, say, I don't know, the mini map, for example, the mini map could be like smaller or bigger, whatever else I'd like. I'm going to select that. And if I just hit R3, I can change the element side. Now, if you guys don't know what R3 is, it's just clicking the, the joystick in, as you can see. So that's how you change element size on console. You can also move things around when you have them highlighted. So like I can hit triangle. You can also change things and move them around if you need to. You can just like click onto the HUD layout itself. And like I can move this around with the right stick as well for if I needed to do that with the mini map. And the way we do that is we can enable cursor mode with any other controller, or we can use the touchpad on the PS4 controller. So as you guys can see, if you need a mouse very briefly for some stuff, you can like double tap stuff and you can click things with the PS4 controller on console. On PC, I would recommend you just use your mouse for this. And actually you could connect the mouse directly to your PS4 if you wanted to. So for example, I have this guy plugged in and I can use the cursor around here just for like setting things up or like adjusting UI stuff if I needed to. Totally unnecessary if you need to, you could all do it on controller or whatever you'd like, but it is helpful to have the extra spare mouse to set things up just because it eliminates the little bit of headache for like setting abilities, setting up UI and HUD stuff. Um, it's just an easier way of doing that. However, if you don't have access to a mouse, and you only have a controller, that's totally okay. Entirely unnecessary. It's just that using the touchpad of the controller or using the mouse here is a little more helpful. But that's entirely if you need to adjust anything in the HUD layout. This video is just going to be for covering controller play, so I won't be covering anything very big on HUD layout in general because cross hotbar is mostly just set up through like the settings and everything, and we're good to go from there. So with cross hotbar, when I play on a controller, you have left trigger and right trigger in order to select ability. So I hold one trigger, and it brings up the right side. I hold the other trigger and it brings up the left side. And having eight abilities on each side for each trigger isn't really quite enough in my personal opinion. So we're actually gonna expand this with the double cross hotbar, otherwise known as the WXHB. Now to do this, we just go to our main menu again. We're gonna scroll over to system. I'm gonna click character configuration and under hotbar settings, I'm gonna go over to custom by hitting the right bumper to get over there under hotbar settings. And I'm going to go down to enable WXHB with simultaneous L2 and R2 double tap. So we're gonna enable this. So just like that, we already have an extended hotbar if we double tap our triggers. Without even applying, you can demonstrate it. And we're gonna want our full eight abilities on each extended hotbar. So I'm gonna enable directional buttons here on this option menu. And as you can see, I now have access to eight total abilities by just by just by double tapping the trigger and it goes away from the regular cross hop bar itself. So now I have even more buttons per hop bar. I'm going to go ahead and set this to hop bar two for when we set it up. So instead of this being cross hop bar eight left and right, I'm going to adjust this and make this for the left double tap cross hop bar two left. 
and then this one is going to be cross hotbar to right. So when I set up hotbar 2, I'll be able to see those hotbar 2 abilities when I double tap the triggers. So now we know that we're going to be double tapping left trigger and right trigger. As you can see, it brings up even more abilities that are going to be set from our second hotbar, which is super awesome. And this brings me back to one of my original points, talking about controller preference and what those triggers or buttons feel like. So as you guys can see, L2 and R2 are just a bit more springy when I have to tap them for abilities, right? Even when I go like this, you can see it just requires a little bit more tension to click the button when I'm double tapping. When I go over to another controller, such as the Nintendo Switch Pro controller, I can easily double tap these buttons without straining that extra amount. It's just a little more convenient. Again, very minor difference, but when it comes to pressing those buttons twice, it's just a lot easier. And that was a big thing I wanted to demonstrate for you guys. But again, if you're locked to a console and using the default controller of that console, it doesn't really matter. It's not a huge deal. This works just fine either way. All I'm saying is one is a little comfier than the other. That's it. So now that we have that enabled, I'm also going to go up here, go to expanded hold controls, and I'm going to click enable expanded controls with L2 and R2. So now when I do this, if I hold both the triggers, it's gonna bring up cross hop bar eight left or cross pop bar eight right. So now that I have that enabled, when I hold both triggers, it's going to bring up cross hop bar eight. I personally don't like the order where it shows like hold L2 to R2 and it brings up cross hop bar eight left, hold R2 and L2 to bring cross hop bar eight right. This comes down to personal preference if you would like having the options of both sides of that hop bar. But to me, I'm just gonna do cross hop bar eight left because what I have set to cross hop bar eight left is actually just going to be my mounts, my teleportation, and sort of other miscellaneous important things that I use. So now when I hold left trigger and right trigger, it brings up that. And I just like tapping them both. I don't know, I don't have a particular order in which way I wanna tap them. I just wanna bring up that menu. However, again, the benefit of having it so it's cross hop bar eight right or left on these would be that you have two sides of that shared hop bar. By default, cross hop bar eight is a, is, a, is a shared hop bar. And you can bring up one side or the other depending on what order you click those triggers. For me, I kind of just tap them at whatever. And because I already have double cross hop bar set, which we're going to be setting up shortly, I'm not really going to need that. And I just want the left side to bring up like mounts, way marks, teleportation, home, emotes, all that stuff. So again, totally personal preference, but having it enabled at all is extremely important. So we're going to keep that enabled. And before we go start setting things up, we hit left bumper here with a cross hop bar. I'm going to go down to W cross hop bar display settings. And I'm going to click always display W, X, H, B so that I know what every bar is going to have and I can visually see where things are. So you can see I can double tap this, get to that bar, or I can just hold trigger, left trigger, right trigger, and I can see what buttons are where, or I can double tap each one. And there it is. I said it in the last couple of videos, but I personally like having a direct visual of what I'm doing in game on screen. So like while I'm learning things, instead of just depending entirely on muscle memory, I can logically remember in my head what is on screen comparatively to like what is on my controller. It just creates a sort of visual for me that really helps me in game. And that's why I display my double cross hotbar. The direct visual translation for me really helps me get along in game. Now there's a couple other cool options here as well if you'd like. So if you feel like the double cross hotbar is a little too invasive, you can set it so that you can position WXHB separately from XHB in the HUD layout screen if I enable this as well. I'm not gonna toy with that too much because I personally don't mind, but if you feel like those cross hotbars are a little bit too invasive and they sort of are in an odd spot, you can change that if you'd like to. It's sort of the bottom line with that. Now I'm gonna click left bumper again and go into sharing and quickly explain how shared hotbars work. And so when you are playing with a controller, outside of double tapping into your cross hotbar, which is set to hotbar two for us, or just holding left and right trigger, you can actually cycle hotbars by tapping R1. Now, because we don't have any action set to any of the hotbar, it doesn't cycle through those hotbars right now. But if we did have things set right now, it would cycle like one, two, and then like eight. And you'll see that as a demonstration later. You can also hold R1 and select Select whatever hotbar you need via the buttons and the front facing d-pad and the reason we're only saying hotbar 8 in our cross hotbar right now is because 8 by default has a bunch of different actions on it i can't quite remember what those actions are but it is like that for controller play and on console in general and i personally use it for all those so again sort of the buttons that i would like to have so for example inventory armory chest 
character, Chocobo Saddlebag, Countdown, Ready Check, da 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 da, Mounts on the other side, Teleport, all that stuff. So that's what I have set on like the primary shared hotbar that I have, because I know I'm gonna need it for every single class. However, in the hotbar settings for sharing, you can set more or less shared hotbars if you need to under cross hotbar here. So right now, the only cross hotbars that aren't being shared with other classes is one, two, and three. You probably won't really use more than three hotbars for one class in general, but if you feel like you need more or less for shared hotbars, here's how you would do it basically. Again, if anything is not shared as a hotbar with other classes, it's only going to be that hotbar for that class. So hotbar one is where we bar our abilities for the class. And when I switch classes to something else, like a different gear set, those abilities obviously wouldn't come with it because I'm a different class. But that's sort of the varying difference between shared hotbars and non-shared hotbars, which is pretty important to know. So for now, I'm just going to make it so one, two, three, four are non-shared hotbars. Five, six, seven, eight can be shared hotbars for now. Again, I'm not going to really ever use all of that real estate for now, but for the sake of setup, we could just have it like that. It's just kind of easier to uh, play around with. But again, it's good to know just in case you want to customize further. And we're not quite done. We're getting there. We're not quite done when it comes to bare minimum setup. My personal new favorite one that I found out was setting sprint to L3 or R3. What are the thumbsticks by just clicking it in? Sprint is an extremely important ability in Final Fantasy XIV, and it's like almost necessary to have it barred. Now, the cool thing with controller is we can automatically bind it to one of our joysticks, almost like a third person shooter or like an action RPG of some sort, where sprint would be to hold the thumbstick in. Just like how I do on my keypad when I click in the thumbstick here, I'm sprinting. That's the button for sprint. I love it. And that's where I get that inspiration from was from controller. So we're gonna set that up. Now, the way we do this, we go over to our system settings. We're gonna go over to user macros. And you guys can see, I already have a macro here on 99. That is slash action sprint slash M icon sprint. And I named it sprint. So slash M icon sets this action to sprint slash action sprint makes it do the action. And you're gonna wanna write this into either slot 98 or slot 99, either or. And you can obviously do that in just a controller. You don't need a keyboard or mouse or anything. You just basically click the action. You click the little window here. You click triangle if you're on PS4 and type in that action by doing this. For each row, you hit enter and it'll bring you down to the other row and you type it in again. If you were playing controller on PC, obviously you just punch this in via your keyboard, which is super convenient. So now that we set up that macro, we're going to go over to system, system configuration, controller settings. I'm going to go down to button configuration and I'm gonna click begin. Now this is the sort of menu where you can rebind your buttons if you need to. Think of it almost as like key binds before your buttons. A lot of these you're likely not going to change for very obvious reasons, but we are gonna change L3 and R3. L3 and R3 is where we're gonna actually bind our sprint button to. This draw weapon slash lock on, we're gonna move over to either or, whichever one we don't use. We're gonna remove change camera as a whole. And the reason we do that is because the only thing that change camera actually does for you is if we click it, it just zooms in and gives you like the first person view of things. We don't really need to have the first person view of things if we don't want to. Then you can always rebind it later if you absolutely need that. But generally speaking, we don't really need that. I mean, you can always like zoom in really far too if you really want to on your character to like look at things around you, but we don't really need that. And again, if you feel like you need it, you can rebind it and I highly recommend you do so. But we definitely don't need it on a button as crucial as R3 here. It just takes up some space that we need for other things. Personally, I like setting sprint to L3 here, but you can set it to R3 if you'd like to as well, whatever works for you. So I'm gonna go to here, click this, I'm going to scroll down on the menu. I'm going to set execute macro number 99, which is exclusive to left stick. When I click it in now, it's going to give me a sprint, which is super convenient. And then when I go over to here, I click this where it's set to change camera. I'm going to change it to draw weapon slash lock on. And the reason I do this is because your targeting will be different when your weapon is actually drawn on a controller, which is super important for us. And I'll explain afterwards. So we're gonna hit apply. And now, just by tapping L3, we can go for a sprint, which is super awesome. I just click it in and I'm going. The only thing you're gonna have to be mindful of, of course, is the cooldown on your sprint and if you're ready to perform the action again. However, you can just click it in and see if it's ready if you absolutely need to. Obviously, if you used it, you know it's not gonna be available right away, but it's usually not too bad. You can usually just know that it's not ready by clicking it in and seeing the obvious not yet ready. And if you're in PvP, you can set sprint to bolt with the other macro and bind it the same way I just did there, because bolt is the sprint action in PVP comparatively to sprint, which is like the PVE action and everywhere else. And then we have it set. So R3, 
is going to pull out our weapon here. And the reason we do this is so we can pull out our weapon and it'll make all the difference when we're cycling targets when we're ready to fight them, which I'll explain right now in terms of actually targeting on a controller, because not many people really know how tab targeting functions on a controller. So I'm going to briefly demonstrate it here. So I pulled my chocobo out here as my uh, handy dandy assistant. And the way that targeting works on a controller is when I click up and down on the D-pad, it cycles through my friendlies and just people in my party. If I had more people in my party, you would see it, but I'm sort of demonstrating it just right now with my chocobo. And that's just up and down. I think it's also really important to note that if you want to cycle through alliances, when you do alliance raid roulette, all you have to do is hold L1 and then D-pad up or down or D-pad left or right. It's not like you'll need that a lot during Alliance Raid Roulette, but sometimes you might have to use it in case a team is down or you need to revive some healers or whatever else for another Alliance. So again, all you have to do, hold L1, D-pad up, down, left or right, depending on what Alliance you're trying to cycle. But it's very handy to know in case like C Alliance healers or like B Alliance healers or whatever else go down. If you're playing a healer, you can res them or help them out in whatever way you have to. Now, when I click left and right on the controller, I'm cycling through all targets in front of me as you can see here. Now, when I hit R3, which we just bound, and I withdraw my weapon, I'm only cycling NPCs, enemies, aggroing enemies, and more important things. Now, it wouldn't usually cycle your party members, I don't believe, but because my Chocobo counts as an NPC, it cycles him as well. If we need to change this, we can change it in the character configuration, control settings, and if we go over to filters, which I was in here, you can change it so that while weapon is drawn, you can only select enemies or friends or all or whatever else you would like to filter it out as. Personally, I keep it as others, which it is set by default. And the reason I do this is because there's going to be moments when you're doing things in game and a fight requires you to highlight an object and click it in order to use that object. It's super important. So like in raids, sometimes there's like, you know, something you have to click or use as an in-combat ability for the duty. And we want to be able to pick that up so we don't die, obviously. So I just keep it as default as others. And I think while weapon is drawn itself is a really good filter to have in general. And it's just conveniently there. Otherwise, while weapon is thief, obviously we're not in combat, we can select anything by hitting D-pad left and right. If you need any further filters on this, you can hit enable customization. And as you can see, it cycles very specific entities when you hold L1 and press a button on your controller here. So for example, let's say I only want to cycle enemies. Now that I have enable customization on, and let's say I click L circle, L triangle, you can see on the bottom right above my health there, it shows which filter is applied for when I'm selecting things. So if I keep it on enemies here, which is L1 and circle, it only is going to cycle enemies. If I switch it back to all, it's going to do everything. But again, that's only if you need the extra filtering. I personally don't like filtering myself only because it takes the extra effort to click like L1 and like a face button. But it's entirely up to you if you'd like to have it enabled. It adds that extra bit of flexibility if you're on a controller and you need to highlight very specific things. I personally am okay with, you know, having my weapon drawn and not drawn for selecting targets in front of me. And like that works well enough for me. So now I'm only selecting NPC, others, enemies, and so on and so forth. But again, entirely personal preference in terms of what you would like to do. And now I think we're going to set up some hotbars. So I apologize for the long windedness, but Again, the whole idea is to set you up for success on a controller in general. So the first buttons I'm gonna set up are for Dark Knight. Obviously, Dark Knight is my main tank. And then I'm gonna demonstrate what this looks like for a healer and a DPS class as well. It'll vary depending on what you're playing and what your main class is, but this is just a solid demonstration of how that all functions all together across all three roles. Okay, so fast forward the video and I have my abilities set up in my bar now. And as you can see, and as you can see, I have abilities set up on cross hop R1 and cross hop R2 now. Now, everything I have set up on cross hop bar 2 is directly in my double cross hop bar. So instead of having to click through to my second cross hop bar, I can just double tap left or right trigger for my WXHB, as you can see. And I have access to all those abilities, which is fantastic. Now, what's great is if I needed the extended hop bars, I could just cycle through them by tapping R1, like I mentioned, which a lot of players on controller will actually do and use muscle memory to remember where certain abilities were that they enjoyed using. Now, again, when I hold both triggers, like I have it set up, I have access to this cross hop bar, which is set to hop bar eight, which is a shared hop bar that I use for like mounts, waymarks, teleportation, everything that's sort of necessary that I use often enough that I'd keep it there in that position. Otherwise, I have my double cross hop bar and my regular hop bar all set up to go, which is fantastic. Now, the way that I had this set up is that 
on the right side on my right trigger, all my main rotation is set up through X, circle, triangle. My plunge, which is part of my opener, is set to square. And then on my D-pad, I have things that are on a larger cooldown because I know I have to move my thumb away from moving to hit the D-pad. So I'd rather keep my D-pad to abilities that I only click every once in a while rather than are using constantly for a rotation. And those abilities obviously include Blood Weapon, Carve and Spit, Edge of Shadow, uh, Flood of Shadow, stuff like that. Or I can easily quickly weave things in. Like, I know if I'm going to be using Flood of Shadow, I can take away my thumb from the joystick and I can completely tap the ability. Then on the left side trigger, I have all my aggro developing abilities, my AoE, my unmen, so like my ranged pull, my AoE ranged pull, my AoE combo, stalwart soul, and unleash. Then on the far left side on my D-pad, I have Delirium with all my Delirium combo abilities, such as Blood Spiller, Living Shadow, Quietus, and so on and so forth. Again, abilities I don't use as much, but are relatively common for me to have there. And then on the double tap of the right trigger on the right side, I have all of my defensive cooldowns, my face buttons, which I use often, and then all of my not so used buttons on the D side of things. So for example, like Living Dead, Dark Missionary for like the AoE shield, Salted Earth for my attack AoE, and Grid obviously which has my tank stance. Just things I don't really need to have up all the time or really need to take much note of and only occasionally press. And on the left side, same thing, all my stuns and my interjects and everything on the face buttons on this side, plus a provoke, which is super handy. It fits right into the AOE combo side of things. Then things like arm's length, shirk, and limit break if I really need them. They're on the left trigger, double tap on the D-pad. I know I'm not gonna use those ones as often, so they're over there. So if I was playing a warrior, for example, I would bind all my abilities in the same fashion that I would bind them for my Dark Knight because continuity is super important. And having that muscle memory of knowing where an AOE combo is or like a provoke is, for example, as cross roll abilities are essentially all the same, I wanna make sure they fit into the same slots within the same role because it helps me memorize where I have those abilities, if at all sort of similar or the same. But for now, let's try a little bit of a uh, practice on this, this ad here. So what I'm gonna do is set this up. So I do plunge into that, into Edge of Shadow, into Soul Leader, into like a Carve and Spit or something. Oh, I didn't pop Blood Weapon. Oops, that's my bad. And then I can use like Delirium combo into like Blood Spiller and whatnot. I'm not doing the most optimal rotation, that's for sure right now, but you get the idea, right? Let's try this again. Run over this guy, I have Living Shadow up, so let's see if I can go and do the thing. So let's go over here, try this again, select this guy, I'm gonna plunge into him, rotation with Edge of Shadow mixed into it, a little bit of double weave for this guy, you know? Yeah, not bad, not bad. Or again, if I needed my range pull or my AoEs, let's say I want to attack these two guys, I'd go over here, I can do an AoE slam, then I can do like Stalwart Soul, for example. Let's say you needed a defensive cooldown, I double tap, click Blackest Knight, and that's available. Or like, you know, Shadow Wall or Dark Mind or Rampart, whatever else I need. And then I combo back into Stalwart Soul. And then I've got these here, so a little bit of Quietus. Another AoE pull. So it's not too bad. As you can see, it's functional. And if I just practice a little bit more, I'd probably good, be good enough on a controller. So. That's how you do it. That's how it's done. And again, you can be extremely optimal on controller if you wanted to. Like, again, all these buttons are just there to press. And like, Salted Earth even. Oh, I missed that. <laughs> I didn't quite get him in there. But you get the idea. The whole idea is to show you that controller is extremely intuitive for what it is. And again, I never thought I'd be playing an MMORPG on a controller, but here we are, and it works. And it makes sense. It's my favorite part about Final Fantasy XIV. It's the fact that we have crossplay, and you could even do that. It's amazing. So now I'm gonna bind my abilities to a healer and see what that looks like. So now I'm back with my healer. Fast forward the video a little bit, and I'm just demonstrating with Scholar really quick here. There's a couple things I would like to change around with this layout, but this works perfectly for now. So again, basic rotation on my sort of right here for attacks. And then on the left side, I have all of the heals that I need and all of the essential buttons to be clicking when it comes to playing Scholar, AKA a healer. And if I was to play a different healer, for example, I would probably put all these buttons in the same sort of relative position just so I can get that muscle memory for playing this class on controller. So when we play Scholar, we start by summoning our fairy. And as you can see, I can tap up and down to select my chocobo. He is my party member right now, so I'm gonna demonstrate some heals on him for right now. And even some, uh, even some, some buffs and everything. Get that fairy in there, get the big fairy out, you know? Big fairy heals. Hell yeah. Needs Ad Laquium, keep him alive, you know, Sukor and all that stuff. Let's give him some more. Let's give him, let's give him some more. Let's give him some more. Yeah, my man. And then obviously when we're in combat, we're just gonna find our enemy here, click into him and do a broil into a ruin. 
And then get some dots up as well while we're at some biolysis. Get him the debuff, for example. And we're gonna heal up our chocobo while we're at it. Oh, he's struggling. He needs a lustrate or something, or needs like a indomitability for the for the whole group plus him. You know, stuff like that. And then we go back to attacking. Which is fantastic. Do some more buffs. Do some more attacking. Nice. And that's sort of the lowdown on playing that. And I could easily double tap and even swift cast a res if I wanted to. Uh, if anyone was dead, of course. Again, super intuitive, super handy. When it comes to healing, it ain't so bad. And that's how you do it. And next, I'm gonna set up a DPS. I think I'm gonna set up Dancer, because Dancer's a lot of fun. I haven't really played that on console, so let's give it a try. Okay, so I set up Dancer. It appears, at least for Dancer, that ranged DPS doesn't actually require too, too many buttons, comparatively to some of the other classes, which is fine. Obviously, you can fill those, that space with like potions or whatever else you feel like you need to, or you can even double up on buttons if, if that's more comfortable for you as well. And it looks like we also have a visitor here who jumped up on my lap. Hello, small cat. Mwah. Love you. <laughs> so like I was saying, Dancer I have set up in such a way that it makes sense for Dancer for now at least. I'm sure I could optimize it a little bit more, but this is good enough for now. So I'm gonna make my Chocobo my dance partner, give him my closed position, of course. If I was had another party, I would actually use someone else in that party to share abilities and buffs with them. But because it's just what it is with my Chocobo for right now, all I need is this. So let's get some dances in there. Let's open up, get started with a few of these. There we go. Dance number one. Get the Devilman in there, because why not? Let's give him some buffs, maybe even a flourish to get us started. Get some fans in there as well. Oh, run out of fans. Hold on, I can dash. Let me tap this. Get some on Avant to get over really fast, of course. Highlight the Vampire Cup. Give him, give him some fans as well. I would usually weave those fans in, of course, but for the sake of demonstration, I just want to show you guys what that looks like, which is fantastic. Obviously, you don't have to be so mo mobile when you're playing as well. You can just stand and hit things. But range GPS has the cool ability to be moving and shoot things or hit things, which I really like. It makes range GPS feel so fluid sometimes, you know? I always like that about ranged. And then, of course, I could heal my party, or I could shield Samba or change position. I could Peloton, give everyone a speed buff, of course. Or, like, do second wind to heal up, or my other dance if necessary. So, again, I'm not as familiar with Dancer in terms of range GPS. I know that I really like it, but I know, like, the bare minimum. I have it at 80, but it's, it, it's you know, it's for a fail. It's for a fail, you know? But again... Just utilizing controller and showing you how it functions for different types of classes, more so as demonstration, just you guys can be comfortable going into this. And as you can see, there is a level of relative overlap when it comes to some of my abilities, so that I have that muscle memory for certain abilities, rather than just like mixing things up, putting things where maybe I didn't have them before, and really remembering where buttons are in general. And this is mostly demonstrated in how I set things up, right? My main rotation is on my right side here, so it's X, circle, triangle, like I had with Dark Knight, and with Scholar even. On the right side, I have all my AoEs and all my AoE abilities, plus everything else on the D-pad that I would only use occasionally that's on a longer cooldown than most other abilities, because the reach over the D-pad is just a little bit further than, say, like, for example, the face button. And, like, Devilman here, fans on the right side as well. I've got buffs on the double hop bar, you know. And then, for example, arm's length is largely stared across all the classes. I just have it on D-pad left because I use it occasionally um, and it's there so I can avoid knockback. Stuns I could probably swap on the other bar, but that's about it. Otherwise, it's all about the same. It's all relative, right? It's also I remember it in terms of muscle memory when I'm actually playing. And that essentially covers all the basics you need to know to play Final Fantasy XIV on a controller. So you can get out there, set it all up, and play with one of these guys comfortably from your couch or at your desk, whatever works for you. But that's one of the beautiful things about Final Fantasy XIV. The accessibility is just there. You can set it up in any which way, and it'll always work because of the amount of customization you have in UI, keybinds, controller, everything else. It's part of why I really love Final Fantasy XIV. Anyone can play it on whatever preferred input they would like to play it on. So thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope that helps you guys set up your controllers for future play. And I hope to see more players on, whether it be controller, keyboard and mouse, keypad, whatever it is. We now have a guide up for anything that you need to get started and pick a preferred input. But at the end of the day, it doesn't matter. As long as you're playing, that's what matters most. And you can be extremely successful with whatever controller type you choose. Now in the near future, I'll be making a guide when it comes to HUD layout and why I set mine up the way I do. And I'll be talking a little 
little bit about MMORPG mice and including those into sort of the overall guide for everything I talked about here. And if you guys are lost on absolutely anything, there's a comprehensive Final Fantasy XIV controller guide that was put together by Squintina Nightguard from Fairy that I highly recommend you guys check out. I'll link it down in the description for you guys, but they've done a fantastic job putting together this really long, well thought out guide. I highly recommend you guys check it out. I learned a few things from that guide as well beyond what I presented for you guys here. And if you're lost on anything or looking for more details, you could definitely find it in their guide, which I will link for you guys. And of course, if there's anything you guys feel like I missed in the video, please drop it down in the comments there. I really appreciate the feedback and the know-how. If there's anything particular that you find has made your controller experience easier, definitely drop it down there for others to see. And I know it could probably definitely help me as well because I have been playing controller a little bit more while I'm in my living room. So with that being said, please drop a like, a subscribe if you don't mind. Stay tuned for more Final Fantasy XIV content and more content for me. You can also find me on twitch.tv slash goblins or goblins.com, G-O-B-R-I-N-Z.com, also down in the description. So be sure to drop in the stream whenever you have the chance to. I always appreciate the new faces. So take it easy, dudes. Have a good one, and I'll see you online sometime. Peace out. I still can't believe I recorded the whole original video on mute. Like, I, I, how? I've been doing this for so long, and I'm like, oh, yeah, just, it's cool, man. Just do the thing.